This week, news around Joe Rogan nearly blocked out the sun. And we're, we can't go a day without bringing up his name. We're certainly guilty of it. So, uh, you know, we cover him our fair share, Rogan versus everyone. But uh, more than anything, the controversy stirred up a debate around the media, trust, and misinformation. Journalist David Sirota pointed out on Twitter, amid the Rogan misinfo scandal, NBC hired the pundit whose book created the key lie pressing America into the Iraq war. CNN officials lauded their disgraced former uh, president who oversaw the network lionizing Andrew Cuomo during a nursing home massacre. Founder of the Daily Poster and now Oscar nominee David Sirota joins us to discuss. Welcome, David. I th didn't you guys change the name? Just to make yes, sure. We are, Did you guys going, we are going to become the lever. Uh, that's happening in a few weeks, and we're expanding. And so, uh, if folks know journalists who want to come do uh, investigative accountability journalism, please uh, get in touch with us at, uh, at at levernews.com. Well, welcome to the show. So, talk to us about uh, what has gone on uh, over the, uh, when we were all talking about Rogan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, we, we have this piece up at Daily Poster right now, which is about how selective the outrage is about misinformation. In the same week that people were very, very upset with Joe Rogan uh, over uh, him platforming misinformation. And by the way, I think uh, we should be upset with any kind of misinformation that's out there. So I think that the uh, the criticism of, of, of Joe Rogan's misinformation is, is totally valid. But as that was happening, as it was blotting out the sun, as you allude to, the, the corporate media was was essentially uh, uh, rewarding some of the biggest purveyors of misinformation of all. Mm -hmm. uh, the example uh, of NBC News, I mean, NBC News just hired uh, Stephen Hayes. Stephen Hayes is the guy who published the seminal book platforming and amplifying the central lie that lied America into the Iraq war, this lie that supposedly Saddam Hussein and Al Qaeda were working together. I mean, Steve Hayes has a book called The Connection, which was thoroughly debunked. So think about it this way, that in as fears of a potential war with Russia continue to intensify, one of the biggest corporate news outlets in the country decided to hire a guy who played a pivotal role in the misinformation that lied the country into the last huge war. That's what NBC decided to do. Meanwhile, as again, as CNN, it's the, over at CNN, it's, it's not much better. Uh, CNN, uh, uh, they, uh, a lot of their officials were praising Jeff Zucker, the president who just left uh, of CNN. Uh, Jeff Zucker oversaw the valorization, the heroization of Governor Andrew Cuomo, with Cuomo going on a show with his brother, which was quite a decision. Uh, at the same time that whistleblowers were trying to sound the alarm about uh, a horrible situation in New York nursing homes, at a time, by the way, when Andrew Cuomo, as we reported, as Andrew Cuomo was shielding his nursing home industry donors from legal consequences for that situation. So you had CNN folks going out in public saying, you know, lamenting Jeff Zucker leaving, not lamenting necessarily that the context for Jeff Zucker leaving was his connection to that unbelievable scandal. So what the point here is, is that the outrage about misinformation is selective. And we should really be asking, where is the real fire hose of misinformation coming from? And I would argue uh, it is coming. It certainly is coming from outside of corporate media. But corporate media is as, is as complicit as well. And if, if you look at if you look at polling data on trust in the media, you know you see a you know you you see it declining through the '70s and '80s and '90s as as trust in all institutions was was slowly coming down, but then right around 2003 you see this just a hard cliff, right? The trust in the media just falls off, and you're like, 2003, you know what happened in 2003? <laughs> Yeah, that that right. might have shifted people's understanding of the information <laughs> that they're getting. And like you said, Stephen Hayes was, you know, a, as much as anybody else responsible for the big lie. We, we've, heard, we've heard the phrase the big lie a lot. Hard to come up with a lie bigger than the con a, con a, a fake connection between Saddam Hussein and the people who carried out 9-11 in order to launch a war against Saddam Hussein, who did not have a connection to the people right. who carried out 9-11. Is it, is it just too big of a lie to confront? Or is it that so many people who were complicit in that lie in 2003 are still in positions of influence 
And so therefore just can't grapple with accountability over that because it would require I, I, them stepping I, aside. I think it is absolutely the latter. Uh, I think that you haven't seen anybody pay uh, really any uh, career professional stature consequences for uh, participating in lying America into the Iraq war. I mean, Jonah Goldberg, another right wing uh, columnist, he was just rewarded uh, with a slot at CNN uh, this week. He was an Iraq war cheerleader. And I think you're right that if we ever opened up the possibility that people who lied us into the worst foreign policy disaster in modern history, if we ever opened up the possibility that, you know, they would be held accountable in the sense of like, you don't get a fancy CNN or NBC job, uh, it would open up so many others to the same questions about why they have been platformed. And my, mm -hmm. my point is, is, your, is that those polling numbers about media trust whether the public has a an awareness of individual hires or individual platforming of people who pushed it, I think the public clearly has a general appreciation for the fact that the corporate media over and over again has lied America into debacles. I mean, I use the financial crisis. I mean, how, mu how much um, corporate media promotion uh, of deregulation uh, happened in the lead up to the financial crisis. I mean, were they lies? Hard to say. Was the thumb on the scale for the Wall Street friendly policies that helped crater, eventually crater the economy? Absolutely. So my point is, is that is that trust in media is a uh, tr distrust in media is understandable. Uh, and that rebuilding that trust is key to living in a democratic society. And so if you're mad at misinformation that's all over the place on podcasts or on YouTube, you should be equally, if not more mad at the constant misinformation that is coming out of corporate media, uh, because corporate media is the one that's supposed to be, uh, you know, have the controls in place, fact checkers, editors and the like. And yet it is still a fire hose of misinformation. Yeah, I mean, we just come back and back to the fact that the ma the mainstream media or many elements of it are significantly, even even though they they in some cases are liberal or progressive on on many issues, there there is this foreign policy blind spot where the average media figure is just much more hawkish, much more uh, sympathetic to an interventionist or even neoconservative worldview than than relative to other issues and relative to the people. So there, there's there's a there's a that is a viewpoint that just doesn't get the kind of punishment or labeling as false or misinformation that everything else under the sun gets these days. Listen, I'm so glad you bring that up because I, I would argue that if we're talking about fears of censorship, that word's been thrown around a lot this week. If we're talking about fears of censorship, the most pervasive forms of censorship are the forms of censorship that essentially erase anti-interventionist, anti-war uh, voices mm -hmm. from the discourse. There, I would also argue that one of the most pervasive forms of censorship is the form of censorship that erases news that might inconvenience or challenge corporate power, that erases that from the discourse. So we really need to think about these, these, uh, these topics and these issues in a deeper way. We need to understand that part of that distrust of corporate media that, that we've been talking about is the fact that people do not see their own mainstream views reflected in the corporate media products. So you're right that the country is, I would argue, far more progressive on basic economic issues than is presented on corporate television. The country is far more skeptical of wars than is presented on corporate television. So in a very general sense, beyond these specific examples, the country is seeing a media that is pretending extremist views are mainstream and that is the source in part of that distrust yeah. well D david sirota uh thank you so much for joining us congratulations on the oscar nomination i i hope you win just because i want to see you give that speech i can't can't wait for that i will actually be watching this year thanks to all of you i appreciate it and we will have more rising right after this